You know, we all can remember the voice of our mothers, isn't it? Even after they have left us and gone, um, sometimes when I pick up a card, whether it's a Christmas card or a birthday greeting, um, I can still hear her voice, the power of voice in the writing. And so as I go into this new episode of listening with your eyes, it's a skill. And I picked it up from a book written by Malcolm. Um, and uh, Malcolm Gladwell writes in the book called Blink. Um, and his last chapter is entitled Listening with Your Eyes. And I think this is critical when you're writing a book or writing a memoir. I'm learning. Um, as you can see from the various uh, videos that I've put out, uh, it's a pilgrimage of how to learn how to write, especially if it's your life story, because it's your voice, it's your story, and it's your history. And that's the truth behind it. And so in this book, um, in conclusion, he writes about listening with your eyes. And I think it's a fantastic gift that if you can learn this skill. And he talks about, uh, you know, Abby, Abby Conant, uh, who was in Italy and uh, she was a, a musician, a professional musician. And uh, this was in 1980. And uh, she was actually playing the trombone for the Royal Opera of Turin. And she was applying for various, you know, orchestra jobs and all that. And finally, she got an invitation from the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra. And the letter of invitation was titled, Dear Er Abby Conant. Invitations can change your life. How you respond to an invitation can change the course of your life. And I've said this for years. And so she goes for the audition. And, uh, you know, to, to avoid any prejudice, what they did was there were about 33 candidates and they had them all playing their instruments behind a screen. All right. So that there was no bias and none of them. They just wanted to be able to listen um, with their eyes. That means all they could see was a screen. OK. And uh, so she played the Ferdinand David's concertino for trombone, uh, which was a war horse audition piece in Germany. And while she played, she missed one note. She cracked at the note G. I mean, if you play an instrument, I play the guitar. And if you sometimes miss a chord, it just goes flat. And so she was packing her things, getting ready to leave. And then she heard the voice, that's the one. And so from one of the selective uh, selection committee people, um, that's the one. And uh, so, you know, they went up and got her. And, and as she walked and made herself to the front of the curtain, there was a gasp. They expected Er Ebi Conant instead of Fraulein. And there was Fra Conant, Fra Ebi Conant, you know, the Fraulein, you know. And because the, the instrument, the trombone, was usually played by males. And the orchestras at that time were dominated by white men. And so to get a lady to walk in front and, you know, and that's the one, it revolutionized classical music. Because from that time onwards, uh, they would have these auditions. Uh, with a screen and they would listen with their eyes looking at the screen but hearing, paying attention to what they're hearing. And so I, I bring this up because it's so important to hear the voice of the author in every book that you read because it makes it so powerful. So often we, when we want to read, you know, we take a book and uh, we go to a quiet place and we don't want any distraction and we want to turn and we want to just get ourselves engrossed into this whole book that we are reading and, and sort of, you know, sort of suck in every word, every scene, every event. And, uh, and so it's very interesting that uh, the power of voice, and that's the reason why um, I've been doing these repeated videos on the pilgrimage of how I'm learning how to write my memoir. Because when you hear my voice till today, when I read any card, you know, from my mom or from anybody whom I know, and I've heard their voice before, it's so powerful. I can literally hear them speaking to me. For example, in this book, The Memoir Project by Marion Roach Smith, um, you will see my interview with uh, Marion, um, a powerful writer, New York's bestseller. And now when, you know, I had to read the book and I read, you know, prepared myself for the uh, podcast. And then I did that. And now when I go back and read some of the chapters that I had not completed, totally different. The power of her voice in her writings. I can feel, I can sense the place, the, the, what she's talking about, the event, the scene. You know, everything becomes more real because I hear her voice. 
And so today in science, um, we have learned so much about paying attention, uh, the art of it, the skill of it. We can develop it. And I want to make that clear to you that when, as I'm learning to write my memoir, it's about finding my voice in those words and letters that I'm writing because it's to the truth. And I want the reader to hear me and follow me and get sucked in and not leave me. All right, because if you miss a line and you come back later, now what's the story about? You've got to go back and read a few lines before that or paragraphs. And so I just want to just uh, touch the science behind all this listening with your eyes. Um, it's because of the revolution in what we are learning about neuroscience, neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, pathways, uh, where we can actually not just put a spotlight on what we are reading, but we can learn the skill of dampening the sound around us. Let me explain. So one of the important points that I'm mentioning is that about paying attention. I want the reader to pay attention when reading my memoir and how do I do that? And so now studies have shown that this whole circuit of, you know, paying attention uh, is not just happening on what's called the cortex, but at the same time, there's also very much involvement of the deeper parts of the brain, all right, which is called the ancient brain, in particular, what's called the basal ganglia. So you now we've got you know visual stimuli that come in through the eyes, what we see, there's auditory stimulus from what we hear. And these are all then related to what's called the area of the brain called the thalamus, okay? But now we know, and studies by, for example, Michael Halassa from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, now we know that the thalamus is not just a relay station, but it's also like a gatekeeper. It can dampen down stimuli that's coming in and going out of it. And, uh, and that affects how we pay attention to what we hear and how we pay attention to what we see. So when I'm talking about listening with our eyes, is that the stimuli that comes in from the visual, sti from the visual stimulus uh, gets up to the visual thalamus. And then this is then relayed on to the prefrontal cortex. But we now know with studies with Halasa that there is now a relay. It goes on to what's called the basal ganglia. And then from there, it goes on to what's called the thalamic reticular nuclei, kind of a thin layer that envelops the thalamus. So you can actually, this is an inhibitory, it inhibits the information that's coming in. And so it's a skill that we can learn, that we can dampen down the sound of the auditory input that's around us. You know how when we want to read, we want to go to a very quiet place, sit under a tree and read a book. But now by developing this skill, we can dampen down the stimuli that's reaching up to the prefrontal cortex. That goes to the basal ganglia. It inhibits this thalamic reticular nuclei of the auditory stimuli, dampen it down. And so we can start listening to the voice of the author in the book. And that's the skill that I'm trying to say, that uh, when we are writing our memoir, it's finding your voice in your writing, so that when the reader is reading, they get hooked onto you. They can hear your voice. And that's important in really enjoying the book. So there's so much that we can learn now by listening with our eyes, how we can develop the senses of, of really listening, hearing the voice of the author in the book. So that's the advance in neuroscience today. Michael Halasa and his team, uh, we now know that these are deep-seated events and the neuronal connections that are happening deep in the ancient brain called the basal ganglia uh, and that the thalamus is not just uh, a relay station but it can also be a gatekeeper to dampen what's around us and it makes interesting more real it makes it more engaged you know you get married with the with the author and at the end of the day it's a book well written and a book well read so i'm learning this that uh, the skill of listening with your eyes so as i read i want to hear the voice and very often, for example, I'm coming up with an interview with Kristen Iris and, uh, and again uh, with uh, Brenda Smith. And uh, these are people who have written the books. But when I hear them on, uh, on YouTube and I hear their voice and when I read their writing, I can literally hear them talking to me. And that's a whole new dimension to writing and uh, memoir writing in particular because you're reading about the life of the person and how that impacts you and hopefully i hope that my memoir as i write about it to you will change your life as it did mine and uh, and i hope that we can uh, become closer to one another through this whole journey and pilgrimage to be better people